Thank you so much, Piju. That was interesting. Uh, I'm still trying to grapple a lot of things. So when you have very intelligent panelists, right, the moderator's job is very, very difficult. Because you have to really understand what they're saying, right? And you're not really adept to understand that, right? But um, I think they put it very, very well. Uh, uh, let me just summarize uh, what you said, right? So we talked about employment, right? And how digital empowerment of, in India is creating a lot of changes in the employment of India, right? It's, it's actually right. Uh, there are two kinds of people in this world, right? We, I'm talking about we, the digital migrants, right? And exactly as Biju said, the young India, which are digital natives, they're born with smartphones. They know only how to talk on um, WhatsApp, right? We never had WhatsApp, right? We had WhatsApp, WhatsApp, man, right? But we never had WhatsApp, right? Uh, you know the, uh, the there was a there was an image that goes on WhatsApp, right? You know the relationship between a pencil and a cassette. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so the young, it's become a trend now. See, we don't know this, but our oldies have actually told us the relationship, right? Right? You know the relationship between that, right? So anyway, I'm saying uh, this is the difference between digital migrants and digital natives, right? And uh, that actually is creating a lot of changes in organization from a job perspective. So a banker needs to understand CBS, right, core banking application systems. A uh, banker has to understand uh, ATM switching, right? I mean, he says, I know what goes in and what goes out, credit, to debit, and all that. Now you're telling me to learn all this, right? Now today, a bank, a front end of a bank, needs to understand MS Office. Ramesh said that, right? Or a telecom company, any front office needs to understand MS Office or you're out of office, right? Uh, Lata also talked about innovation. And innovation plays a big deal because you need innovative strategies to actually skill those, the, the uh, people required for these new jobs or what these new jobs have changed or transformed into, right? Uh, I, have a, I have a question for the panel members, right? Uh, there's a whole change in the way business is being functioned today. I mean, today, every day when I travel, I listen to the radio, right? I still listen to the youngsters radio, right? And they keep talking about Big Basket. Now, sit at home and order your stuff online. I was really cool with going to the shop, right? I could see people, I could say hello to somebody, I could open the door for somebody. Yeah, the traffic is the only bad part. But uh, there is a whole change in the way life is being, uh, we live our lives, right? How is that affecting the employability? The digital transformation, how is that changing the employability of people? How is that changing the employment of people? Right? If maybe Piju, if you can throw light on that, please. Yeah. So uh, maybe I'll take a shot at answering that question. You know, frankly, if you ask me, when you buy on Big Basket, you do everything that any your local Kirana store will do, except that Big Basket doesn't have a store. It replaces a store with a warehouse. So if you look at all of the processes which go behind, which is in terms of ensuring that you actually go out and buy products for the big basket store, so you have to do that, you have to store it, you have to then make sure that it is made available online, and the moment you run out of stock, you remove, remove it online. Physically, when you go to a store, you'll never see it if it is run out of stock, but digitally, you have to make sure you remove it when online, the moment you run out of stock. Then if somebody places an order, then you make sure that you actually, when the whole order transaction happens from the customer side. Earlier, you had to go to a shop and there the shopkeeper would ask you, write on a sheet of paper what you had actually bought. Sometimes if you went to a modern retail store, you put everything into a basket, you come back to the cash counter and then they will bill it for you. So depending on which kind of store, you would have different processes. But at the end of the day, all of that you do now. Finish the transaction, then they pick it up and they deliver. So the only thing which is happening now differently is that if you went to a local Kirana store, he would also pick it up. A big basket does it in a warehouse. If you go to a modern retail store, they also make sure that you pick it up and bring it to the till and then you build it there with them. So effectively when you look at the two, in terms of the, the processes, the core processes remain, remain pretty much the same. It's only the interface. The interface which has now benefited customers is the fact that today you can actually see the store sitting in your house or in your office or when you're traveling. 
you don't need to actually go to the store any longer. So there is convenience. The second is that if earlier you had to shop between 8 o'clock and 8 o'clock, today you can shop 24 hours. So you don't have to worry about that part of it. The third part of it is that earlier, if you had to go to three stores to probably make sure that you complete your shopping basket, now because there's only one big basket, they have the ability to have a much wider range. And consequently, you can actually buy pretty much everything in that one shopping expedition online, which is there. The last bit of it is that because Big Basket is building scale, it sometimes is able to offer you promotions of prices, which your local Karana store might not be able to give you at all. And it takes away the pain of your travel, as you said, especially in Bangalore and its traffic. So there are conveniences which are there. But in that convenience, there is something that is also getting lost. You're now interacting with an inanimate object. Big Basket doesn't know you from Adam. If you went to your local Kirana store, he would know you and say, Mr. Joy, how are you? Good to see you again. And should I give you a Colgate toothpaste? You know, you normally buy Colgate. So that familiarity is now getting lost the moment you get online. But those are things that you trade off anyway in this whole process. You know, the convenience and the familiarity is something that you might trade off against the fact that you get better prices, etc. Perfect. Uh, with, I think with that also can be solved with personal technologies because now today Big Basket actually uh, or any of these digitally empowered businesses actually track every transaction of yours. So he knows exactly what you're surfing online, right? Through your cookies and your cash. Uh, yes, right. Not your transaction, but where you're surfing. Where you're surfing. So everything. So he knows that okay, you were looking at wrong sites, right? So we'll ignore that. But you were also looking at sites where you wanted to buy t-shirts, so they can give you personalized technology. So personalized technology adds on to these uh, e-retailing uh, sites. Ramesh, you wanted to say something. What I want to say is that this tech-savvy young India, okay, uh, must educate everyone in the household. Today, the problem is with 50s and 60s and 70 age group. They don't understand digital, they don't understand technology, they don't understand IT, including the housewives who are not really literate for whatever reasons. So there can be one way of looking at it is there can be a new subject introduced in graduation and post-graduation on digital technology. And it is not IT. Unfortunately, in our country, people think technology means IT. Technology is only, IT is a very smart of technology. There are hajar technologies. So one new subject in uh, education and let every house be educated properly in digital India, okay, because that is the future for all of us. Yeah, and you also spoke about the employability. Now that's going to have a big effect uh, on the entire population. Uh, on one hand, we wanted the old uh, form of selling from the store, physical selling, etc., and making billing through the hand, everything. Some of them would even know by memory how many items were picked and they will tell you the prices. But uh, what is happening is that uh, with more automation, more uh, digitization, we are going to get a new set of uh, jobs or new set of roles and the old roles are going away. So what happens typically is the response is, my job is going away. But that's not true. Uh, what is happening is it's getting replaced or even displaced through another different set of roles. And people need to understand that nothing is going away. As long as they can adapt and change and reskill, or at least be aware that these things are coming and then we need to do these, you know, take, you know, actions to make sure we are employable, then I think we are good. But yes, there will be a certain group of people who probably are not able to cope and then we'll have to live with that because the change is uh, more important than a small group of population. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, that, that you know, you know uh, uh, we were going through uh, 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 a conference on Digital India a few months back and it says di just digital India initiative, right? If it kicks off, there is a crore of uh, ten crores of direct and indirect jobs that are being created, new jobs being created. So new designations, new jobs being created uh, across the country. That means there are no new jobs created because of uh, initiatives like Digital India, which essentially you know lives up to the digital transformation. Uh, uh, by the way, the questions I'm not supposed to be asking the questions. You're supposed to be asking the questions. And I'm support, supposed to be moderating it. Yes? Oh, we discussed last time, right? Yes, we're going to say a resounding yes. Yes? yes? yes. Thank you. We've been speaking about digitalization of India. have some doubts, sir. 
where 70 percent of our population is residing in rural India, they are really technologically very, very poor in that aspect of operating, even knowing about it. How far the government will be successful? What are the challenges for the government and we urban people and uh, technologists, IT, all this uh, corporate sector to make it successful to the rural, uh, rural and uh, remotest areas of India? Uh, the question was very valid question. Uh, the 70 percent, you know, 60, 70 percent people in rural India which are not technologically adept to understand this change or to be part of this change. Uh, how how strong will India be, or how will we take care of that skilling? I'll respond and then hand it over to my fellow uh, panelists. I think um, between rural and uh, the urban India, there is definitely going to be differences in how uh, the jobs will move and how the education will happen, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, one thing to be said is that the penetration of mobile handsets is uh, probably the rapidest or the most rapid in India. And you will uh, you'll find that almost everybody, even people who you thought cannot read or write are now dealing with the mobile phones. And now they are going to be multilingual, which is they're going to have all languages available on your handset. They're looking at banking operations that can be easily performed on a handset, as well as many of the other e-governance that we spoke about. For example, you need a passport, you need to you know, get a ration card, you need to uh, do very other you know, simple things on the phone is now going to be enabled. So the smartphone revolution is here uh, and is here to stay in a very big way. That's the first point. So we are over time being able to do this. Uh, obviously, initially, it will, it's going to be a struggle because of the uh, ability to educate people to get on to the phones or the platforms that are available for people to transact. But uh, once they start picking this up and they know that it is so easy and uh, it makes life that much better, uh, there will be more adaptation. It's, it's about how we educate and how we adapt to this whole uh, uh, you know, new circumstance. And I think it's only a matter of time before it happens. Uh, they may not require to go to a big store or a mall uh, like we do in the cities. They probably can get it off the field much easily and more, probably even more pure vegetables and grains that uh, we struggle to find in, in the city. So uh, I, I think there will be a change, there will be changes in both urban and in the rural, but the rate of changes could be different. Just to add on, ma'am. Uh uh, so, Skilling India is another initiative uh, by Government of India launched along with Digital India to ensure that there is uh, a lot of new skill development that happens uh, across uh, uh, the country, especially in the rural areas. Uh, the rural growth in mobile is the fastest across the globe, just a minute, uh, across yes. the globe, right? And that actually is enabling uh, these initiatives to go faster. Uh, yes. I'll just, I'll just add to what Lata said and I think... Uh, you know, one of the things that we must remember about digital is that even when we talk about digital India, it's about extending the digital network that we have to rural population. Uh, we have, as you mentioned, about 65% of our population now living in rural India, and almost 50% of that population is actually employed in agriculture. And one of the things that we have seen in agriculture is that in terms of weather and in terms of prices, there's been a lot that has been done using digital technology. The second is that we are one of the largest producers of fruits and vegetables in the world. And if you look at all our staples between rice, wheat, sugar, we are either number one or number two. And what we do notice certainly is in the whole agri supply chain, which is moving produce from the farms to the markets, there is almost a 30 to 35 percent wastage which tends to happen and that happens because of the physical transportation and one of the challenges that the government has had is to be able to create employability at the rural areas so that we can do two things one is that you can actually add value at the rural area itself rather than bringing it to an urban center to add value and the second part of it is use technology to be able to understand where to store and where to transport. Because there's no point in transporting if the price is low, you might as well store. So that whole balance of storing to transporting, the government and even private sector doesn't really know if it doesn't 
have that information. So there are ways and mean, means in which they have used it in agriculture. Health and education are the two other areas where there is a strong focus on using digital to be able to extend education down. We always hear about physical schools with no classrooms and even no teachers. And we talk about you know the access to medical facilities being so far away that the, the mortality rate is high because of the sheer lack of access. And this is one area where they are able to move let's say tertiary technologies to primary centers using digital technology, similar like that with education too. So there's a quality and a standardization of education, which can happen in rural areas, which doesn't otherwise happen, because physically the teacher is not capable of delivering that. So there are ways in which it can, you know, beneficially impact the people in rural areas. Yeah, sure. See, all of us know Baba Ramdev, right? Why he's successful? Because every day morning he's there for one hour and everyone performs. A number of people perform the asana, but they don't know how to come out of it. So they get stuck and they also get injured. There are a lot of cases, that's, that's one part. Similarly, uh, Digital India, advertisements are coming. We are seeing ads on the TV. But more than that, there must be awareness sessions, which can reach that 70% what she is talking about. I think we need more and more, especially in the regional languages. That should be the main focus. Advertisement will project the government, but that is not the objective. It should actually empower the person. So what is it? What is required is the education part. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I, I would like to ask on the face of the coin, what's the impact on urban area where we are into too much technology and what's the impact on human race and the spirit of human, you know, like uh, the emotions and the stress level when we are getting into too much of technology. <laughs> that's, uh, that's really linked me too much because looking at our kids and uh, family environment, and of course the college and uh, <laughs> human race. That's a very dangerous area. Anyway, we'll ensure that we at least give you some of it. Uh, who would like to go, sir? No, no, yeah, that's perfectly fine. It's a brilliant question. It's just that it'll take us about six hours or seven hours of debate to actually answer that question with its logic. But, but we'll, 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 we'll attempt. Uh, I saw this very interesting picture. Um, the kid is at the dining table, the other kid is sitting inside the living area and the husband is upstairs, all doing their own things with their gadgets. And you know what the mother is doing? She has a large that pepper churner, you know, the one that rolls the pepper. So actually I believe they are uh, now, if you twist the pepper turn, uh, churner, it actually switches off the internet connection. <laughs> so that's the dinner gong, <laughs> the bell for dinner. So when she does that, there's a huge noise eruption in the house. Oh no, <laughs> you know, my network is down. <laughs> so, you know, that's how it is. The younger generation cannot do without connectivity, no network, no memory. These are the three things that they need. <laughs> Food is incidental. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, this is definitely uh, all pervasive and we've got to really watch out. Um, and I think every one of us are very aware, uh, while technology is going to help us uh, speed things, you also have lots of meditation courses and yoga courses that are also coming up. So uh, the good come with the not so good all the time and uh, we know that all revolutions are, uh, you know, counter uh, revolutions also come up along with them. So that's how it is going to be and yeah, it's already leading, it's already yeah. leading to early burn-offs. Uh, we, we tell, uh, you know, some of the people who come into the uh, workplace that uh, we are running a marathon, <coughs> not a sprint. Let's understand that. And so what basically, Lata is saying, this is the wallet, this is the bullet. You choose. <laughs> <laughs> and what is it if you become a, a VP at 35? I mean, uh, the very brilliant ones naturally can become without so much effort. But if you put so much effort and pull everything to become a VP at 35, what next? And what about the other you know, part of your life? Work alone is not going to help you go through, sail through life. It's not giving to, going to give you the balance that one needs. So I think it's very, very critical that uh, parents, um, educational institutions, teachers uh, are all cognizant of this fact and keep uh, the education up on the subject. That's my take. To the extent possible, children must work hard, play hard, okay, eat hard. That eating is also very, very important, which is not happening. They are eating everything, mentally they are eating, but physically also. And where is the playing? Where is the interaction? 
so as our responsibility today the parenting skills are more important than technical skills we can have a separate seminar on that parenting skills so there are a lot of answers live with the parents also to the extent possible please take them away from technology make, make them play make them interact let them grow the normal way and to whatever extent we can so yeah, yes uh, let us uh, get get back to little serious stuff uh, i don't mean that the other thing has not been serious uh, let us look at the database you have the database at the national level standardization you have to have a the state level standardization you need to have at the urban semi urban and panchayat levels all these are relevant you need to have equipments place and you need to have backups and you need to have power supply and what all things charging or recharging or whatever things are required and maintenance services and all things are required if one place in one network in one corner one database is missing or something is damaged disrupted the personal life data are all totally lost you are not going to have any more hard copy of certificates recently we had the floods in chennai because the floods everybody lost their all their certificates and everything similar things they everything has gone and similar things can take place so how these things you know, banking industry took 40 years to bring this core banking system still they are still developing they are developing into from city bank their backbone has been changed and new new things have come into play lot of things have happened when to get into proper banking services so that is in that event when we are looking into the whole digital ndi in that way how long it will take it's not going to take just three years or four years or 10 years let us be more specific how do you expect the cost which will be available and total time it may take to achieve some standard uh, quality services to everybody and finally how we are going to skill all the people we reach really their people so that everybody enjoys thank you so much for that question uh, actually uh, one second sir uh, actually this is already in place uh, there is uh, dit the department of information technology uh, has already uh, standardization uh, policy in place for digital india there is uh, a standardization for internet of things dit has got an iot policy in place <coughs> Uh, uh dt has got a cyber security policy in place but yes your question is very valid how long it's going to take to actually implement it at the ground level is a question uh, question I, i i don't know if any of us can answer but i'm talking the ground yeah uh, we don't know sir actually we don't know yeah. right yeah. but uh, but uh, today there is a, a different way of solving that uh, ppp uh, a private public partnership is how they i think they're going to do how successful as a subjective question i cannot answer that right only mr modi can answer that but uh, that's the way to uh, actually implement standardization of anything which is got an iot foundation is what my thing is uh, i think we'll have one or two questions more i don't know how much how we doing on time yeah my mom asked that um, technology ad technological addiction there are many research already had been done on the technological addiction British Medical Journal has published. Neiman Sis has opened a new clinic for especially adolescent those who are addicted to technology. People are already coming. Parents are coming with their children. It is for your information. Thank you. <laughs> so you know how to solve that problem. Thank you so much, sir. Right? Uh, positive time. Right? Yeah, because Ramesh said so. Only because he said so. Thank you, Ramesh. <laughs> any student i i just saw two heads go down they were young heads i said any students and suddenly like why is that you can ask stupid questions there's no stupid questions in a conference right all questions are good questions i know oh, we said students sir are you a student okay this is to you do you know who's the richest man in this world <laughs> yeah the the greatest philanthropist bill gates continues to be the richest man in the world backed by a technology company yes this do you know that there are 
around few thousand of uh, uh, robots that are being purchased in India in automobile industry, which I gathered the information from the morning panel. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Fine. That is going to replace around 40,000 jobs. Yes or no? Absolutely. In the next, yes. If How could you justify by stating that you are going to, uh, uh, you know, make it happen that there will be 10,000 crores of job. Brilliant. Okay. Process. Okay. When we get to notice, 99 percent of the process jobs are going to go uh, uh, taken away by technology uh, enhancement. Now, I don't know. You, you know, there is a, uh, there is a drastic difference with the knowledge gathered from the morning panel and what you are saying right now. Absolutely. So, uh, could you please enlighten us? My job to justify what I what what uh, I said. Uh, when you have uh, when you said there are 40,000 uh, robots bought, which are going to take. I didn't do that. Uh, which are going to take away 40,000 jobs, right? Uh, but along with those 40,000 40, robots, uh, you need maintenance engineers for those robots. Those are new jobs. Uh, 40,000 robots every day pick up data, right? Which has got to be analyzed. You need people for that, right? This analysis goes into information where decision makers, uh, decision making has to happen. You need more people for that. So it creates jobs. That's why I said direct or indirect jobs, right? These are indirect jobs that get created because of new technologies being implemented, new digital strategies being implemented. Amazon today, right, has no stores, but has got more jobs than Reliance Retail. Right? In that logic, because Amazon has got no stores, right, all the retail jobs should go away. It's not happening like that. So there is, while there is an imbalance somewhere, it gets balanced somewhere. That's why we were talking about all this while we were talking about there's a way the skill is changing. There is a different, the, the skilling itself is changing, right? The nature of those jobs are changing. It's not that jobs are being taken away, right? Uh, in manufacturing, there's automation, right? Uh, Internet of Things, uh, uh, Ramesh talked about Smack, it's actually Smacky now, right? It's social, mobile, analytics, uh, cloud, and Internet of Things, right? Uh, that's actually creating more jobs, right? On one side, there's short flow jobs going down, because of higher automation, but there are more analytics jobs coming up. There are there's an ecosystem that's been created, which is creating jobs. So there's a balance somewhere. Right? You scared me with that aggression of the question. But thank you so much for that question. Thank you so much. I think we'll make that the last question. And uh, we still agreed with the thing. He was a student. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, we'd like to thank the panel. I think it was brilliant. Right? I think it was really, really brilliant. And Ma'am will take care of the rest, right? Uh, as uh, rightly put it across, yes, we are going to thank the panel now. I think that's correctly due. Uh, to do the honors, may I request Dean of Commerce, Dr. Ishwaran Ayer, Jain University, to kindly come forward. I'll first request her to hand over a memento to Lata Subramaniam, from, uh, who's, who was the former HR aid in IBM. Ma'am, thank you so much for being here. May I now request sir to hand, hand over a momento to Ramesh Vemuganti from Chanakya Consulting, Hyderabad. <laughs> sir has come all the way to this conference. Thank you sir for being here. Biju Kurian from Titan Watches. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the wonderful moderator, Sujay Nair. <laughs> because it's too obvious. Basically, I'm here because of uh, two people, Dr. Subhu Subramaniam and uh, Dr. Usharani. And they, we are all part of MTC Global. In fact, that's the reason I just want to share with you. MTC Global is the largest management forum okay, from India, started by a very passionate Bangalore associate professor called Professor Bolanath and he started in 2009 we are all on the advisory board initially now today one person has become 30,000 people and 20 countries and every day we every year we have an annual event here okay and a lot of our members keep exchanging mails 25 people are may have exchanged mails each member has written 400 mails in the last five years thank Touchwood I am also one of them I have grown because of MTC Global, I have grown because of interaction, I have grown because of knowledge enrichment, knowledge sharing, knowledge diffusion, knowledge dissemination and that is what each one of us has to be done. 
So all said and done. The last point is what in what way MTC Global is useful to you? MTC is Management Teachers Consortium. Every management teacher, every management professional can be part of that. Supposing a management teacher in Mysore wants to teach corporate strategy, he will send a mail, what is corporate strategy? He will get 10 lines, 10 mails, how to teach corporate strategy. He can go to the class and start teaching. It is like that. Today, thousands of teachers are being benefited. Thousands of professionals are being benefited in their organizations. They are getting stuck in so many areas, different functional areas, what to do. So this is what is a forum. So kindly also, you can also be part of that. Okay, and let's all move forward. Thank you very much.